Super Mario 64. What is there even left to say about it? I mean, really, what is there left to say about it? I feel like that everything that there is to say about it has already been said. It's revolutionary, it defined 3D platforming, and it's a classic that holds up to this day. Well, you know what? I still want to talk about this game. It's one of the first games I ever played. It introduced me to platformers. It's the earliest game that I really got to sink my teeth into. It really means a lot to me. But how do I avoid saying something redundant? I, I might have something. I've got a solution here. With this. This may look like an ordinary Game Boy Advance, but I promise you, it is anything but. This right here is a time machine. <laughs> yeah, it'll let me go to any time I want. How? Let's not question these things, all right? Can we just accept that I got my hands on a time traveling Game Boy Advance and leave it at that? But listen up, okay? Here's the plan. Okay, so I get my N64 and my copy of Super Mario 64. Why does it say Pokemon Snap on it? You know, I got time traveling Game Boy. You know, we're past that, okay? Anyways, so I get these things and I travel back in time with the Game Boy Advance and I go back to 1996, before the release of Super Mario 64. That way, I can release my review before the game's even out. <laughs> it's genius! There's no way I can be redundant because absolutely nothing has even been said about the game. Oh, and uh, to ensure that I actually beat the game, because what kind of reviewer would I be if I reviewed a game I didn't even beat? I programmed the Game Boy to actually lock me out of the ability to time travel until it detects that I beat this cartridge of Super Mario 64. It's a foolproof plan! Alright, here we go. 1996, get ready, because here I come. Let's go. exactly know what the 90s is supposed to look like, but you know, I was born in 99. Yeah, this looks about right. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Excuse me, sir. Could you uh, tell me what the date of today is? Uh, uh, it's the 22nd of October. Oh, dang it. So close, you know what? A couple of months ain't too bad. Um, excuse me, sir, but uh, might I ask what that peculiar device you're holding is? Oh, uh, this is the, the Game Boy Advance. You'll get this soon enough. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Game Boy? Yeah, you know, the Game Boy. What are you, living under a rock for the last seven years? It came out in 1989. 1989? Yeah, it was, or uh, is, a pretty big deal. Are you sure you don't mean 1889? Why would I be talking about 100 years ago? And does this look like something that would be made in 1889? It doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. And what are you going on about 100 years ago? I knew from when I first saw you that you were some sort of a skid rogue. A, a skid what? Yeah, your strange clothes babbling on about nonsense, acting like you don't even know what year it is. Wait, 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 what? What year is it? It's 1925! Now would you breeze off? Wait, I, I didn't travel back to 1996. I traveled 96 years in the past! Okay, okay, I have to admit, this is a bit of a setback. But I've managed to set myself up here in this abandoned shed. I figured I should get myself a little comfortable since, uh, as it turns out, I actually can't manually unlock the Game Boy's program to allow me to travel back to the present. 
I honestly don't know how I managed to mess up this badly. I mean, I won't even be seeing another video game for like 50 years. Never mind the N64 and 70, or me existing in three years past that. I can't be trapped in 1925 forever. I guess I'd only be trapped in 1925 for another couple of months and it'd be 1926, but you get my point. I don't think I could stand not being able to play a game again until I'm in my 60s. But there is hope. You see, the Game Boy will still unlock if it detects that I beat Super Mario 64. So, I set up this little generator here to power it up. It's, you know, a little steampunk, but it gets the job done. And I was able to connect the N64 to my phone to use as a screen, and blam, I can play Super Mario 64 in 1925. Not too shabby, eh? However, there is a slight issue. The Game Boy's battery is not going to last forever. And I have to keep it constantly on, or the preset temporal coordinates will be reset. And I don't have the time to even begin to figure out how to re-enter them. So, that means that I have to beat Super Mario 64 before the Game Boy runs out of battery. Or it could be decades before there's anything powerful enough to charge my time machine. Actually, what? hold on. Uh, how much time am I looking at here? Two hours?! I only have two hours to beat Super Mario 64?! I can do this. I can do this. I've beaten Super Mario 64 tons of times. And there's a massive speedrunning community for this game. Or, or, or there will be anyways. And I mean, I've never tried speedrunning before. But what a better time to try than before the concept even existed. Mario. Okay, now I'm on the clock. Oh, okay, wow, this, this is already so nostalgic. Oh, I remember messing around with this face here for hours. Ah, no, 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 I'm not here to have fun. I'm not here to have fun. Dear Mario, please come to the castle. But oh man, does this game take me right back to being a kid. Or it takes me straight forward to when I was a kid? I don't know, time travel's confusing. <laughs> After the intro, there's no time to waste. No time to waste. No time to... Dang it! Why is it so fun to just mess around here? The controls have aged so well! The jump height is as high and responsive as you'd like, the momentum is carried just right, and it will be so smart for Nintendo to give you such an open area to mess around in and get used to the mechanics. 3D is going to be so new. It makes sense to ease people into it. But I don't have time to ease into anything. I'm just here to beat the game. Go through it, smash through it, gotta stay focused. God, jeez. I used to cover my ears when I was a kid before going through the doors because I was scared of hearing this laugh. But, but I mean, it's, that's stupid. It's, it's not scary. It's, it's not scary. <laughs> that's ridiculous. All great adventures begin in Baba on Battlefield. As in this single great adventure. But really, what's more iconic than that goofy, energetic music greeting you? A wide open landscape filled with polygons and squares. The level design is so ambitious for the time. Or, or uh, will be ambitious for the time. It is so open with all sorts of different ways I can decide to go about it. But I'm not here to be distracted by level design. I need to get to the top of the mountain which isn't that hard at all, just requiring a basic understanding of the mechanics. Reaching the top gives me my first boss battle, Big bub -omb. He talks a big game, but this ain't my first rodeo. Couple of dupes, get behind him and toss him around a bit. He goes down easy and grants me my first star. Here we go! Huh, I must be making some great time. Uh, on the other hand, you know, let's speed it up. Uh, the Koopa the Quick. That's a good one. 
Uh, maybe he can give me some pointers. Not. He is really easy to beat. So, uh, more starters like this, please. Whoever decided that you can ride Koopa shells is a genius. Why isn't this in more Mario games? This is so fun! And... And back to reality. God, okay, it's so easy to get distracted in this game. Okay, alright, speed run. Just keep going. Don't even care where. Blast to the island! There we go, okay, Star Got. Let's try Womp's Fortress. Another classic. <laughs> well, look at this sleeping idiot. <laughs> I guess I deserve that. But then, uh, get this box here, and... Ha <laughs> ha! Nobody makes a fool out of me! Dang it! Okay, uh, let's go faster. Alright, wall jump here, and star. See? Told you I was a speedrun champ. My bad? So the game can be janky. Like, the wall jump is pretty weird, and for some reason, sometimes when you go to turn, you do a U-turn-like motion, and sometimes you snap all the way around. This slight inconsistency can be really annoying when you get into tight maneuvers. But you can use the jank to your advantage, like ground pounding through a womp. That turns this intimidating battle into nothing more than a walk in the park. And I'll need every little exploit I can get. Actually, time moves faster when you're having fun, right? Well, all I gotta do is make sure that I'm not having any fun. Simple. Like, look at this crappy ice level with this uh, stupid fun slide. Oh yeah, uh, I, I, I look at this shortcut. Uh, this, the slides used to be my favorite part as a kid. I just keep going down them over and over. No, nope. uh, they suck. Mm-hmm, totally. Like, listen to this annoying penguin. Wee, 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 wee. Oh, oh, come on now, I get it. You miss your mama or whatever. Okay, here you go, you stupid bird. Now, you know what must be done. A couple of, uh, stupid stars later, and, uh, now I'm on a water level. And everybody knows water levels suck. No. No. No, please, no. No, n not the nostalgia. No. Ah! So simple but effective. One makes you fly, one makes you heavy, and one makes you intangible. I find that they offer some pretty fun platforming challenges, though the wing cap can be uh, a little bit of a hassle. The metal cap though is super satisfying to use, and I'm glad it's gone on to be iconic. Oh hey, I'm, I'm on my first Bowser level. You know, I gotta say, I think I'm making some brilliant progress here. I mean, I'm this far into the game, decades before it's gonna be out. <laughs> Come on, I mean, that's great, right? That's, oh my God, I'm getting drafted into World War II. I'm gonna have to live through the Great Depression. I'm gonna have to pretend to be excited for the moon landing. Oh, oh hey, it's Bowser time. Go! Jesus. All right, let's do this. A hop here, some jumps here, and there we go, okay. Here's Bowser and all his polygonal glory. I've always kind of struggled with these throws, but, you know, I can make it. Yeah, there we go. First Bowser fight down. You know what? Still, with an hour left? An hour? Something I think we take for granted is how well thought out the level design is. For the most part. Many levels are open enough to give the player many different methods of getting a star. I think it's what makes the game so satisfying to speedrun, because optimizing a path through these levels and deciding which stars to go for can be so satisfying. Does anybody know what Einstein was up to around now? I could use a little help with this whole 
routing thing. I mean, all this level design stuff sounds pretty obvious, but for the time, this was not established yet. So it is really impressive that Nintendo got how to make 3D work so early. And they make it look so easy too. But try any other 3D platformer at the time and you'll see what a struggle 3D really is. The combat and enemies are also made very effectively. Think about it. 2D enemies and interactions are really simple. They are an obstacle just by kind of just being there and being in the way and having a hitbox. And defeating them is also super easy. You barely have to think about it. But when that goes into 3D, things get complicated really quickly. Now, instead of an enemy being inherently an obstacle, in 3D, you can just, uh, you know, go around them. Not to mention that attacking already becomes a problem. Jumping on an enemy becomes way more cumbersome and shooting projectiles like fireballs can be easily clunky and more difficult than it's worth. Super Mario 64 barely seems to have to try to reimagine the classic enemies. Goombas? Well now they do a charming little hop in a chirp before locking onto you. Not hard to deal with, but now they all of a sudden are something more than a mindless hitbox, but actually give off an interesting conflict. Thwomps? A large cube put on a stairway that forces awkward maneuvers around an uncomfortably hanging enemy that will crash down at any moment. Prana plants? Sleep and will snap awake in almost a horror move. Booze? You can actually defeat them now, requiring tactical maneuvering which can only be possible in a 3D space. It's something you don't even think about because it feels so natural. And the combat is also well thought out as well. Jumping on enemies is surprisingly easy, but still not the most reliable move. So Mario is now equipped with punches and kicks. They are predictable, reliable attacks with generous hitboxes. Slide kicks, air kicks, and dives all provide a variety of solid attacks that not only act as excellent offensive tools, but also great movement options. Air kicks give a short but useful air stall that I get quite a lot of use out of. Dives are a risky mid-air burst option, but satisfying to pull off and... What? 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 No, 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 please don't, dang it! Ah, come on, okay, I need, I need something to burn, I need something to burn, this thing's running out of fuel here! I, I, I don't know, all I have is my, my Game Boy, uh, my wallet, my phone, uh, and this copy of DeBlob for the Wii! Okay, I was bringing you back in time to see if I could warn the future of this heinous creation. Eh, I guess it's useful for something. Gotta admit, uh, not the biggest fan of Tiny Huge Island. It is one of my least favorite levels, which is weird because it has an interesting gimmick. But I find that, funny enough, the stage is either too small and narrow, or too large and uninteresting. Despite how impressively well these mechanics do hold up, or uh, will hold up, they struggle with precise platforming since there is still quite a bit of jank. Which is kind of unfortunate because now I'm in the final leg of the game on the third floor and all that awaits me are some of the most tight, precision-based platforming in the game. Though I actually don't mind TikTok Clock, since you are constantly progressing upwards, a fall or a missed jump doesn't always mean death. Don't get me wrong, it can still be annoying, but it isn't as bad as it could be. The other thing I like about this level is the fact that the level's speed changes depending on the time it says on the clock when you jump inside. So it can be anywhere from very fast to literally still. And these varying speeds can make specific platforming challenges easier, so there's actually an incentive to utilize the different speeds. But then we get to the rainbow carpet ride, and this is where perhaps Nintendo's ambitions were, uh, are a little ahead of uh, themselves. For the most part, it actually isn't too bad. There are definitely parts where it feels like I'm pushing the awkward parts of the movement to its limits, but it's mostly quite manageable. If anything, the most annoying part of this level is just how tedious it is, since it's practically an auto-scroller with how slow moving the carpet is. Not to mention any slight mess up will most likely force you to have to restart the ride all over again. But you know what? At least I'm almost there and making some great time. I still have about a half hour to clean up some more stars. Here we go. No, 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 please, no, no. Dang it, I'm so close. But it's running out of power. I have nothing left to burn. Wait a second. Okay, okay, you know, I, if I can just, I don't know, maybe try uh, some of this. Yeah, 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 okay, 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 okay. There we go, okay, okay, 
Alright, so if I divert some of the power from the Game Boy into the N64, it might just be enough to make this work. Alright, uh, that, that leaves me with, uh... Five minutes! Five minutes?! How am I supposed to beat this game in five minutes?! I'm gonna have to pull off a special trick that all the speedrunners know. The backwards long jump. Okay, for some reason, when long jumping, you can pull back and start to go backwards. It isn't very fast or useful until you line it up with some stairs and steadily press the button in a precise manner, and... Yes! Yes, I did it! I'm up the endless staircase, which turns out isn't too endless if you know how to build infinite momentum backwards. Okay, now, no more fooling around. All right, no, I can't make one more mistake. Everything needs to go perfectly. I could still be the first one to ever talk about Super Mario 64, years before home gaming is even created. Okay, quickly. Super Mario 64 revolutionized gaming. To find 3D platformers is a classic that stands the test of time. Mario will have seamless transition into 3D? Huh. You know, even though not even a thought of Mario exists right now, it still feels redundant because it will be redundant. And sure, you know, this is the first time any of this has been said, but does, does it really matter when it will be said so many times? You know, especially since, you know, these observations are so obvious. The Nintendo 64 will be home to the earliest memories I have of gaming, and Super Mario 64 will open my mind to the possibilities of what gaming can be. This game is not just a landmark in gaming with all the credit that comes with that, but it's just a damn good game. It's filled with so many ideas that are filled with imagination. I mean, paintings acting as portals? Bombs having a war? Why not? Bowser has a submarine now, sure. At the end of the day, Nintendo wanted to make a game that was just fun. It might be clunky and janky by today's standards, or um, future standards, but it will still be fun to pick up and play. I think what it comes down to is that Super Mario 64 was just made to be fun. It doesn't use 3D as a gimmick, it just is 3D and has fun with it. What a different world we'd be in if Mario didn't figure out 3D so quickly. 
Okay, all right, you know what? I actually should go before I'm trapped here forever. Okay, so, uh, um, uh, I guess, uh, you know, thanks for watching, and, uh, see ya in the future, and become awesome. <laughs>